Reptilian humanoids are a reoccurring theme in mythology, ancient legends, religion, and history in every culture around the world. They are described as individuals or races of intelligent or otherwise highly developed reptilian-like beings, even gods. Theories of reptilian beings are dismissed by mainstream modern culture, but why do they so often appear in our ancient past? Let's explore the fascinating legends and origins of the ancient reptilian agenda from every corner of our world. Reptilians are strongly present in ancient Chinese mythology, folklore, and religion in the form of dragons that can shapeshift into human form, hybrids, or even spiritual beings. Dragons are often used as a symbolic reference. Chinese dragons traditionally symbolize potent and auspicious powers, particularly control over water, rainfall, typhoons, and floods. The dragon is also a symbol of power, strength, and good luck for people who are worthy of it. With this, the Emperor of China usually used the dragon as a symbol of his imperial power and strength. The origins of the Chinese dragon are not certain. The presence of dragons within Chinese culture dates back several thousands of years, with the discovery of a dragon statue dating back to the 5th millennium BC from the Yangshao culture in Henan in 1987 and jade badges of rank in coiled form have been excavated from the Hongshan culture circa 4700 to 2900 BC. Ancient Chinese stories depict many different reptilian deities. Only a few have been described as real flesh and blood beings that lived alongside humans. Other dragons were described in spiritual form and were responsible for creating the earth. Nu Hua is a goddess in ancient Chinese mythology best known for creating mankind and repairing the pillars of heaven. The Hua Nanzi relates Nu Hua to the time when heaven and earth were in disruption. Going back to more ancient times, the four pillars were broken, the nine providences were in tatters. Heaven did not completely cover the earth. Earth did not hold up heaven all the way around its circumference. Fires blazed out of control and could not be extinguished. Water flooded in great expanses and would not recede. Ferocious animals ate blameless people Predatory birds snatched the elderly and the weak. Thereupon, Nuwa smelted together five colored stones in order to patch up the azure sky, cut off the legs of the great turtle to set them up as the four pillars, killed the black dragon to provide relief for Ji Providence, and piled up reeds and cinders to stop the surging waters. As the azure sky was patched, the four pillars were set up, and surging waters were drained, the province of Ji was tranquil, crafty vermin died off, and blameless people preserved their lives. There are some ancient Chinese legends that suggest that some Chinese dragons are more than just symbols. It is described in Chinese culture that a select few ancient dragons actually existed, had power, wealth, and knowledge, and could assume human form. 
Fuxi is a cultural hero in Chinese legend and mythology, credited along with his sister Nuwa with creating structured human civilizations, the invention of hunting, fishing, and cooking, as well as the Kang Ji system of Chinese writing characters from 12,000 BC. Traditionally, Fuxi is also considered the originator of the I Ching. Which work is attributed to his reading of the He Map or the Yellow River Map? According to this tradition, Fuxi had the arrangement of the trigrams of the I Ching revealed to him in the markings on the back of a mythical dragon horse, sometimes thought to be a tortoise, that emerged from the Lao River. This arrangement precedes the compilation of the I Ching during the Zhao Dynasty. This discovery is said to have been the origin of calligraphy. Fu Shi is also credited with the invention of the Guqin musical instrument. Fu Shi was counted as the first of the three sovereigns at the beginning of the Chinese dynastic period. Fuxi was known as the original human, although technically speaking, he was half human and half serpent, and could shape shift. And he was also said to be born on the lower middle reaches of the Yellow River, in a place called Changji. According to the classic of Mountains and Sea, Fuxi and Nuwa were the original humans who lived on the mythological Kun Lun Mountain, or today's Hua Shan. Fuxi and Nuwa used clay to create offsprings, and with the divine power, they made the clay figures come alive. These clay figures were the earliest human beings. Fu Shi is said to have lived for 197 years altogether, and died at a place called Chen, where a monument to him can still be found and visited as a tourist attraction. The four dragon kings are deities in Chinese mythology, commonly regarded as the divine rulers of the oceans. They have the ability to shape shift into human form and live in an underwater crystal palace. They have their own royal court and command an army comprising of various marine creatures. Apart from presiding over aquatic life, a dragon king can also manipulate the weather and bring rainfall. Each dragon king ruled one of the four seas, corresponding to one of the four cardinal directions: the East Sea, corresponding to the East China Sea; the South Sea; the West Sea, sometimes called King Hai Lake; and the North Sea, sometimes called Lake Baikal. The dragon kings were perceived at a time to be real figures that did exist. And they are seen as in charge of water-related weather phenomenon. In pre-modern times, many Chinese villagers, especially those close to rivers and seas, had temples dedicated to their local dragon king. It is possible that the early Chinese peoples were describing an ancient race of extraterrestrials with advanced technology, and had set up underwater bases on Earth to guide the developing human race as some kind of project, controlling the weather to possibly help terraform the Earth. Possibly, they were a now extinct pre-human race that originated on Earth and once inhabited the Earth before mankind. One thing is clear: that ancient reptilians, in reality or folklore, did impact the human race in a very significant way.